one does not simply walk into Mordor. The land of shadow. Welcome everyone. In today's shadow cast, we will be focusing on the great battering ram, Grand. Uh, whence came its name? Uh, where was it made? How was it made? And why was it chosen as the best method to attack the gate of Minas Tirith? Uh, in this video, I'll take you along with me as we return to the land of Mordor and explore the forges where Gran was conceived and fashioned. And most importantly, why did Sauron choose this method of attacking the great gate of Gondor uh, in the battle and the siege of Minas Tirith? As we do in all of our shadow casks, we will explore Grand through the lens of the Tolkien canon and the Tolkien legendarium as we uncover all of the hidden secrets of Grand, the great ravening wolf of the Pelennor Fields. Bring up the wolf's head. Grand was made for one purpose only, to breach the great gate during the siege of Minas Tirith. Sauron knew that the gate was the weakest point of the outer wall of the city, which was great in height and thickness, built when the power and craft of Numenor in exile was at its height. It is said that the outward face was like the Tower of Orthanc, hard, smooth, unconquerable by steel or fire, unbreakable except by some convulsion that might rend the very earth on which it stood. The great gate into Minas Tirith was no mere entryway into the citadel of Gondor. It was fashioned of iron and steel and was flanked on either side by towers and bastions of indomitable stone. However, Sauron knew that the gate into the city was the key to the fall of Gondor. The battering ram, as described in the Red Book of Westmarch, was said to be massive in scale. Here is the passage concerning Grand and the siege of Minas Tirith. The drums rolled louder. Fires leaped up. Great engines crawled across the field, and in the midst was a huge ram, great as a forest tree a hundred feet in length, swinging on mighty chains. Long it had been forging in the dark smithies of Morgan, and its hideous head, founded of black steel, was shaped in the likeness of a ravening wolf. On its spells of ruin lay, Gran they named it, in memory of the hammer of the underworld of old. Great beasts drew it, orcs surrounded it, and behind it walked mountain trolls to wield it. Gran crawled on. Upon its housing no fire would catch, and though now and again some great beast that hauled it would go mad and spread stamping ruin among orcs innumerable that guarded it. Their bodies were cast aside from its path, and others took their place. Gran crawled on. The drums rolled wildly. Over the hills of the slain, a hideous shape appeared. A horseman, tall, hooded, cloaked in black. Slowly, Trampling the fallen, he rode forth, heeding no longer any dart. He halted and held up a long, pale sword. And as he did so, a great fear fell on all, defender and foe alike. And the hands of men drooped and dropped to their sides. And no bow sang. For a moment, 
all was still. The drums rolled and rattled. With a vast rush, Grand was hurled forward by huge hands. It reached the gate. It swung. A deep boom echoed and rumbled through the city, like thunder running in the clouds. With the doors and iron posts of steel withstood the stroke. Then the black captain rose in his stirrups and cried aloud in a dreadful voice, speaking in some forgotten tongue words of power and terror to rend both heart and stone. Thrice he cried, thrice the great ram boomed, and suddenly upon the last stroke the gate of Gondor broke. As if stricken by some blasting spell, it burst asunder. There was a flash of searing lightning, and the doors tumbled in riven fragments to the ground. In rode the lord of the Nazgul, a great black shape against the fires beyond. He loomed up, grown to a vast menace of despair. In rode the lord of the Nazgul, under the archway that no enemy ever yet had passed, and all fled before his face. This, for the most part, is what we know about Grand from the Tolkien canon. Now let's delve a bit deeper into the Tolkien legendarium. In the years leading up to the Dark Lord's final assault on Middle-earth, plans were made for the siege of Minas Tirith. A key component of the plan to destroy Gondor was breaking the Great Gate into Minas Tirith. Sauron conceived the idea of a massive battering ram designed by the minions of the Dark Lord which would rival any device of war ever constructed in Middle-earth. It was likely forged in the dark furnaces of Barad-dûr so that Sauron could keep a close eye on its conception and construction. Gran was forged by black Numenorians of great skill and power deep within the smithies of the Dark Tower. The hideous head of the beast was made in the likeness of a ravening wolf, in honor of Sauron, who often took this form in ages past. It was forged of black steel, and its mouth was filled with fire. They etched upon its metal hide morgul spells of ruin, terror, and breaking. Some among the defenders of the city of Minas Tirith, who watched Grand roll across the battlefield, believed it was made of more than just iron and steel. That within its metal carcass lurked a terrible beast bred in the black pits of Barad-dûr, that could breathe fire like a dragon and roar like a demon of the ancient world. Some say these were merely superstitions, born of fear, but as Grand was destroyed in the ruin of battle, none now can say for sure. Many have asked why Sauron would choose this method to attack the great gate of Minas Tirith, rather than using the fire of Orthanc used at Helm's Deep. There are two things to consider here. First, it is not clear that Sauron was aware of this new sorcery. It is possible that Saruman kept his secret discovery in abeyance as a possible defense against an assault from Mordor. Secondly, such a weapon would not have been to Sauron's liking. The Dark Lord preferred to undo his enemies through fear and despair which were always his greatest weapons. Grand, marching slowly across the Pelennor to the gate of Minas Tirith, would fill the enemy with a terror that would overwhelm them long before the first blow shook the city. To further inflame fear in the world of men, Sauron named it Grand, in homage of the first Dark Lord's greatest weapon, Gran, the hammer of the underworld, 
was the mighty mace wielded by Morgoth when he fought Fingolfin, king of the Noldor, before the doors of Angband. It is written that each time Morgoth struck the ground with his mighty mace, it shook the land like a bolt of thunder, creating pits from which smoke and fire erupted. However, Fingolfin evaded these fell strokes inflicted by Morgoth until he grew weary and was finally crushed under his own shield. Such was the lineage of the name Grand, the great battering ram used in the siege of Gondor. Grand was forged in Barad-dûr and would have been transported from the dark tower to the field of the Pelennor likely broken down into many parts. The huge wheeled structure that held Gron from chains was likely assembled in a staging area on the western edge of Osgiliath. Gron would first have crossed the iron bridge that led from the gate of the Dark Tower. From there, it would have traveled along Sauron's road to the foot of Mount Doom. There it would have traveled on the road to the Morgul Pass. After being hauled over the pass, it would have descended into the Morgul Vale. It would have been stabled there, waiting until Sauron gave the signal for war. Grand would have then been carried by the armies of Morgul through the ruins of Osgiliath, crossing the river Unduin, and then on to the fields of the Pelennor. Grand was then assembled and made ready for battle until it was called for by the lord of the Nazgul, who ordered the siege of Minas Tirith. Grand hung from a massive frame of wood and iron on thick black chains. This siege machine was surrounded by a legion of large black Uruks of Barad-dûr. Behind walked a band of Alohai, the mountain trolls from the Vale of Udun, and it was drawn forward by a flanks of siege beasts shipped north from the jungles of Thar Harrow. As it neared the walls of the city, the entire orc army surrounding the gate chanted the name Grand, Grand, Grand. Then all fell silent across the battle. The lord of the Nazgul, wielding his pale sword, commanded the operations of the battering ram. The great gate was broken, and so with it was the spirit of the city. In this moment, the city of Minas Tirith was ripe for the taking. However, the tide of battle was about to turn. No one knows for certain what happened to Grand after the fall of the Witch King. It is likely its timbers would have burned amid the wreckage of war, though its steel and iron body might still be buried somewhere beneath the dark fields of the Pelennor. So ends the story of Grand, the greatest war machine ever created for battle in the world of Middle-earth. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this exploration into the dark mysteries of Grand, the great ravening wolf head on the fields of the Pelennor. As usual, I hope you guys will continue to join me on my journey through the land of shadow. If you like the content in this video, please give me a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to, so that you will know when my next video is premiering. Um, It helps spread the word about the Mordor rising once more from the ashes. Um, In our next shadow cast, we will be returning to the second age where I want to discuss the orcs of that era. So until the next time, I hope to see you in the orc holds in the dark veils.